Good morning. Um, it's really a pleasure to be here today with Arkady. Um, and um, as mentioned, he's the founder and CEO of Nebius, which is one of the largest independent um, AI infrastructure providers. And it's headquartered, um, and its main R&D presence is in Amsterdam, with additional R&D hubs across the US, uh, Europe, and Israel. Um, and before launching Nebius, um, Arkady co-founded Russia's Yandex and ran it as a CEO for 25 years. I first met you in Moscow probably, I don't know, about 15 years ago. And um, since then, we have intersected at tech conferences all over the world. I'm glad that you are here today at DLD um, at this crucial time uh, in the AI market to explain what you're doing now. But I did want to take a moment for those of you who may not be familiar with Yandex to explain how Arkady got to where he is today. Um, Arkady was found, uh, sorry, Yandex was founded in 1997, a year before Google. And um, it counted uh, Esther Dyson, a uh, longtime uh, DLD attendee, uh, who I think is here today in the audience, um, as one of its early investors. And Yandex was really one of the rare uh, Russian tech success stories. Um, it became known as the Google of uh, Russia, given that it sold uh, products broadly similar to its US counterpart, including search. Uh, e-commerce, advertising, maps, transportation, and a lot more. Um, now, while Yandex's primary market was Russia, the company went public on the NASDAQ in 2011 via a holding company um, based out of Amsterdam, uh, or in the Netherlands, and um, that was followed by a secondary listing three years later on the Moscow Exchange. Yandex hit a peak market cap of $31 billion um, on NASDAQ in November of 2021. However, in the months that followed after the Russian invasion of Ukraine, uh, NASDAQ put a, a temporary uh, hold on uh, the trading of, um, of Yandex. And so Yandex, uh, NV, in the Netherlands, divested its Russian assets, uh, a process uh, that took two long years um, and was very stressful. And the company renamed as Nebius. It's now trading on NASDAQ uh, under a new ticker. And following this listing about a month and a half ago, it raised $700 million from NVIDIA and venture capital firm Excel. Now with more than $1 trillion projected to be spent on AI infrastructure in the near term, and the fact that Nebius has been named as a launch partner for Nivea's next generation Blackwell platform, the Motley Fool said in a January blog post that, he, that it believes that Nebius is positioned to have a quote, monster year in 2025. So um, before we get to 2025, I do want to take a moment against that backdrop to you know, ask you about your incredible wild ride in 2024. I mean, you divested the Yandex uh, holdings from Russia, you launched Nebius in July, you built new data centers in November, you relisted on NASDAQ and acquired new investors by December. How does it feel to start over? Well, uh, it feels like a startup. We, a young startup, uh, six months in since or seven days old. Uh, what ge generally happened, again, when invasion started, half of the Yandex uh, top management and a thousand engineers uh, left the country. And two years, two and a half years later, we started up as a new company with uh, several businesses, the main, the largest of, of which is this AI infrastructure, because we have with us uh, all the engineers who built, used to build Yandex inf infrastructure, uh, megawatts, hundreds of megawatts of data centers. Uh, we were one of the largest uh, uh, NVIDIA cl clients, I think the largest outside of China, US. Uh, kept these good relationships and we realized that, again, when we left, there was no ChatGPT. And then uh, when 
this new wave of uh, genetic AI started, we realized that probably this is exactly the place where we are very much relevant, because we know what it is about, we know where it will be uh, in a few years, and this is what we can do one of the best. And we decided that we will we'll build this build business, and this business is built on three big pillars. One is, of course, technology. It's AI infrastructure. It's AI and infrastructure. It means that it's technology and a lot of capital. So on technology front, we have one of the best engineers in this field who work together for decades, who know what, what they're doing, what they're building. We have no doubt that we, we know how to build uh, this infrastructure. Uh, and we have the product now and we have the data centers and we're building very fast the new ones. That's the first pillar. The second pillar, we have enough of capital. And in this new market, there is not so many independent companies who have money to build this. Uh, we have a couple of billion of dollars with us. It's not the 31 billion, which it was in the past, but still a couple of billion dollars to start with. Uh, we raised some more uh, from uh, NVIDIA and several dozen of uh, investment funds, including Axel. Uh, so we have the second leg, the second pillar, which is the capital, which allows us to build a lot of these new data centers. And we already have built some in last year and continue building very fast this year. It will be hundreds of megawatts of data centers, and in 2026, we are ready to build a gigawatt and more, providing there will be a demand. We know where, how we build the supply. Technology and capital, we have it. And the third pillar, the third leg, is actually to be sure that demand is there to build go-to-market mar strategy, and that's why uh, this is exactly what we're building now. Again, we're very young. We started to build it a couple of months ago, <laughs> and uh, we hope that uh, um, this is actually our main uh, focus for this for this current uh, period. So, you have the AI talent. You you know brought out, as you said, about a thousand uh, people from uh, top talent from Yandex uh, in, in Russia, you brought them outside. You have the data centers, you have the GPUs, um, but you also have uh, another differentiator from uh, other alternative infrastructure providers, and that is uh, like the software stack and being able to provide. So can you talk about that? Well, uh, the infrastructure is a thin layer which supports the whole, this, this whole new wave of AI, Gen AI. Uh, it's a big wave, it's as big as, I don't know, internet was 20 years ago. We're actually rebuilding the internet. That's how it feels now, these days. I still remember what it was in the 90s, 2000s. Uh, and this is the new wave with the same consequences, I think. There will be a lot of business uh, to build in this, uh, in, in this area. And, um, uh, 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 what it was. <laughs> I, was I was asking you about your differentiator and about the so, fact that you can uh, go be, beyond and. and so people who, uh, yeah, uh, this 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 actually this business is very much run by the big tech companies, uh, the three, four, five, you name it. Uh, we used to be one of those companies in our past lives, we remember what it is, but uh, now what we can offer is an alternative to these big tech companies. They are full stack companies who actually build infrastructure, models, applications, everything there. And they are the major consumers of these technologies. But there is also the second part of the market, a lot of independent AI developers. And we were targeting those. And for those companies, independents like ourselves, startups, now we know very, very well what it is to be outside of this ecosystem, uh, to be on a startup. We built a thin layer of infrastructure which they will be, could use as an alternative to the, to the actual competitive, to the competitors, to, they, they compete with these big tech companies. And 
there is a whole bunch of these new companies, alternative to the big tech. They're called neoclouds now. And among those neo clouds, there is just a bunch of several companies who are really big, who you can build in scale. And just, I don't know, half a dozen or less. And we definitely will be one of those. Uh, and our, we're different a little bit from the rest of these peers of this class of neo clouds. One, because we have our own technologies. We're not buying from different places. We are not the integrator. We build the data centers ourselves. We build them very efficiently uh, with less uh, uh, energy cons consumption. We build our own racks inside the data centers, the, the computers and disks inside, which gives us even more efficiency. And we have our own software layer on top, a cloud. So we, we are a full stack company which provides everything as a, as a package, which makes us more efficient and the second thing, as I said, the second pillar is the capital. We have access to, we, first of all, we have our own cash, and we're a public company. We have better access, cheaper access to capital. So combined, we hope we will be one of the most efficient AI infrastructure, alternative AI infrastructure provider, one of the most efficient uh, new right. cloud. Thanks. So what I'd like to do is put, it, put this in context in terms of, of the market. So governments have begun to view AI compute infrastructures, including advanced AI chips, as a geostrategic resource. And with good reason, in a recent podcast, Sam Altman called compute the currency of the future. And he says he believes it will be maybe the most precious commodity in the world. Now, Nebius is dealing in that currency. Talk a, a little bit about the global AI race and your role as an alternative global infrastructure provider. What does the market look like now? You know, how, how many, what percentage of the market is, is being gobbled up by the, the biggest players um, and on, on down? I can just share our experience. Again, we started just half a year ago. And we are in Europe. We have uh, 500 develop engineers in, in Amsterdam. And we had our first data center was in Finland. So we're, we're a European company. And I thought that we will be probably one of the largest or the largest AI infrastructure company in Europe. And that's for the first couple of months. That's how we actually try to position ourselves until we realized, we started looking at our customer base, and we realized that the majority of the customers are in US. Because our customers, first of all, at this stage are so-called AI native, the startups uh, backed by the venture funds, and the majority of them are in US. And then we started looking into Europe. There is a lot of European uh, startups as well, and we thought they will be our primary clients when they went to them, Many of them told us, thank you very much for your European infrastructure, but could you please build more in US? We want your US uh, uh, data centers because our clients are there. So right now, we don't, again, the, at this stage, it's a pretty early stage, the majority of consumption of AI is what we see is there in the US. That's exactly where we now built our sales and marketing structure. We're hiring mostly in the US. Uh, again, engineers are here, but sales and marketing for now will be there. And that's where we will be building the data centers next year. We're still building in Europe. It will be still hundreds of megawatts, but even more, times more, we're building in the US. And we're launching. We will launch something, we will launch something very soon, and the, the, the whole next year we will be launching a lot of data centers capacity there. Because so far, AI native startups are there, big techs, most of the big tech consumption is there, and it's a, also a geopolitical issue for them. And maybe on the next stage, when the corporate market will adopt AI, and it will, it will come will come maybe this year or next year, then that's where I think Europe will shine because corporate market in Europe is pretty strong. Okay, just take a minute to um, briefly describe beyond, um, you know, Nebius's infrastructure business, the other businesses that you're, you are providing. I have uh, 
yeah, we have a couple of other we call business units. Uh, one is in uh, model, uh, it's when humans train machines, it's Taloka, uh, and their customers are these huge, largest uh, model builders, uh, Google, uh, Amazon, uh, Microsoft. Uh, the other is uh, a so-called reskilling startup. Uh, it's when we, it's when machines actually train humans to, for them to get new specialties in, to, and become from I don't know, marketing specialists to data data analysts. Uh, and this is uh, Bootcamp, which was called the best in U.S. by Fortune magazine last year. And uh, most, one of the most promising business units is autonomous driving, I think. The 2025, many people say, will be the year of autonomous. I totally share it because uh, there is a big shift coming uh, now. Uh, autonomous became real. Go, if you don't believe, go to San Francisco, look at Waymo. And there will be a lot of changes on this market. And we are one of the few companies in the world who used to put cars on public roads in real cities with nobody at the wheel. We have this team, a very experienced team who can do it. I think there will be a lot of alliances going on next year and I hope we will be part of that. Okay, so we're almost out of time. Give us, you know, two predictions for 2025. Uh, uh, well, AI infrastructure will definitely grow and there will be more and more demand that it grows like magnets of water a year. That's it's not a prediction, it's, it's, it's obvious. And I think, the second prediction, I think we will be one of the key players in this market and one of the largest alternative uh, AI infrastructure providers. And for autonomous driving? And definitely one of the players there. Okay, with that, we're out of time. Um, please give a nice round of applause for our Cardi.